Thomas Margoni, who is a senior researcher at the University of Amsterdam at the Institute for Information Law. He's an expert in copyright law and the internet, particularly with an international point of view. So he's going to talk about the licenses that apply in, in the study. Um, yeah, I'd also like to say we have uh, a summary of the study here. I didn't say that at the beginning, but you're welcome to follow us up to the end. Please. Thank you. And very soon uh, the entire study uh, will be available in uh, just 150 pages that uh, you can uh, uh, joyfully read before going uh, to sleep. And you will have all the details of what we are summarizing to you today. But uh, what you have uh, on, on the desk, the 10 pages paper, is something that I really warmly recommend you to pick up and to read. We tried to, made it, to make it as <coughs> clear and understandable to non-lawyers as we could. Uh, that's of course a hard task since we are lawyers, so you know, to us it's clear and understandable. Um, Niels that just left uh, has put a lot of work in that and also in the Ennalia as well, in the one page, two pages that is basically a summary of the recommendation. This is also available at the desk outside and is also something that uh, you should uh, take a look at if you're interested in, uh, in this field as you know sitting here at 9 a.m. might suggest that you are. Uh, if you have specific questions on that, so the second part of uh, this legal session, um, we have two panels where the whole idea is to have an interactive debate so that would be uh, the perfect time for, for you to ask uh, uh, questions if there is any part that is not clear. Um, but yes, uh, let's move to licenses. So as uh, uh, Professor Wiebe has, uh, has uh, uh, um, said in a very effective way, we are in a field where the legal dimension uh, can be extremely complex. Um, we have uh, uh, a bunch of laws at different levels that uh, sometimes, unfortunately, are uh, contradictory. It's not always clear uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. Reasons are, you know, of course, there are different interests behind the legislative process, so every result is to some extent a compromise. Uh, the one that we are facing uh, in these days, today in particular, uh, the sui generis database right is a rather bad compromise, everybody agrees. Uh, but still, that's the law that is in force, and so uh, we have to cope with it. Um, as Andreas pointed out, there are exceptions that uh, can prove extremely uh, uh, effective to, to, uh, um, to protect a specific interest in a given case. So, for example, the Prabhkov exception or the scientific exception. But unfortunately, these uh, um, exceptions have been drafted in a way uh, that uh, it's very hard to rely on them on a general basis, especially for a study, for a project uh, as Open Air Plus that aims uh, uh, at representing the European open access infrastructure. Um, reasons are many because they are very narrowly drafted, the wording is not clear, the concepts are not, uh, uh, are not by themselves clear, and in their application in international law, they they are not clear. Um, and especially because exceptions both for copyright and for the sui generis database right are not mandatory. It means that uh, each member state can decide which one to implement the international law. At the end of the day, that's what really matters, what has been implemented in international law. So in theory, we are in a uh, uh, in, in a European uh, copyright system where 28 uh, different countries can ha implement on the basis of copyright and, uh, and sui generis 15 different uh, 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 exceptions and limitations or combination thereof. So th that gives you like a matrix that is quite complex and uh, you, you should not forget about it but use it as an extreme ratio. If you don't have anything else, look at that. But that's not enough for, for a study as Open Air Plus. So we look at a different tool that in our opinion, and not only in our opinion, it's, it's the standard tool to, to, to face uh, this type of problems, 
uh, uh, it's at our disposal nowadays, which is contracts. Um, the construction is very clever. Uh, on the one side, you have legislation that grants to authors uh, and to right holders of the database right a lot of rights. Great, then we use this power to license those rights in a way that we find this should be the standard approach, especially in the field of, uh, of uh, scientific knowledge, uh, a field where the knowledge uh, in many instances is produced thanks to public funding, this knowledge should be freely available. Since the legislation uh, does not uh, uh, offer by itself this feature, we can combine the power that the legislation, directive, laws, etc., uh, gives to authors or better to right holders, um, suggest or recommend them to apply to this you know, big power that they have specific contracts, these corporate licenses that we are about to look. And in this way, we are able to uh, create this uh, system of, uh, of shared knowledge where people can legally have access and reuse this knowledge, which is basically what we want to do. And contracts um, are the tool that uh, uh, we have identified for this purpose, but you know, the entire open access movement has, uh, is based on this. Uh, the entire free open source software movement is based on, on the use of this type of contracts to achieve something that currently the legislation wouldn't, wouldn't allow. Um, so our, I don't enter into the recommendations that will be <coughs> outlined by uh, Lucy Gibo at, uh, at the end, uh, but what we conclude is that everybody should use uh, uh, one specific license and we found that the Creative Commons uh, uh, public license version 4, it's the license that uh, um, OpenAir uh, Plus should use, both inbound and outbound, and then Lucy probably talks more about uh, the importance of this aspect. Um, the Creative Commons is a suit of licenses because we are talking about one specific license, the Creative Commons public license, but even that one is a suit because it comes in, let's say, different flavors or better in different license elements. We have attribution, share alike, non-commercial, non-derivatives. We conclude that uh, non-commercial and non-derivatives non should not be used. This creates uh, unnecessary burdens for the circulation of data. Attribution is the one that we recommend. Share alike, that is the possibility to create derivative works only uh, under the obligation that the derivative work is licensed under the same license or an equivalent one. Uh, it's something that can be used or not. So we believe that in the case of data is not really necessary. So in our opinion, attribution should be uh, the best option, but also the share alike option is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, acceptable and it's fit for the purpose. Um, I would enter a little bit into the, into, well, why we chose uh, uh, this specific license uh, uh, as the one that uh, we think it's, uh, it's the, the, the model that everybody should use. Uh, we will see that we, in the study, especially not maybe now in this presentation, but in the study we have analyzed other licenses that are available. And here I briefly uh, explain you why we think that uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, public license version 4 um, is uh, uh, what you should choose. Um, well, as Almost any, li any open license, that is any license that uh, aims to achieve a, a open access or free open source software model, if you apply the same rationale to another field, grants the, uh, the right to reproduce and redistribute. Uh, that are the two main rights within which you can include uh, the right to make available, to communicate to the public, to make available to the public uh, uh, online, etc., etc., etc. So everything that copyright scope includes. Uh, in verbatim or modi so in, in the original form or in modified versions. So you can also modify uh, the, the, the work that you obtain and, uh, and, uh, and redistribute it. Um, however, uh, Creative Commons version 4, the CCPL version 4, includes this strange uh, European uh, invention, the sui generis database, right? That's, uh, 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 Professor Wiebe uh, uh, um, gave uh, uh, a short uh, uh, description 
in before into the scope of the license. This is very important. There are a lot of licenses that do not do that, that do not explicitly include the sui generis database right into the scope of the license. Um, this means that this right is not licensed. This means that if you have, uh, uh, let's say, a repository, <coughs> and this repository is, uh, in, that, re that has been a substantial investment, so it's protected by this sui generis right. And this repository is licensed under, say, a Creative Commons uh, 3.0 imported, you cannot data mine it. That would be a violation of the right holder sui generis right. Hmm? Because as we <coughs> see later, version 3 unported, unported does not include the sui generis right in the scope of the license. Uh, other licenses that we have identified, although would qualify uh, as open access in the field of copyright, like as understood before the sui generis database right, after the enactment of this right in Europe, uh, they cannot uh, uh, truly be considered open access because they do not include in the scope explicitly the sui generis database right. If this is not included in the license, this remains into the dominion of the right holder. It's not licensed. You don't have the permission to use it. If you do, you're infringing his, uh, not copyright, but sui generis uh, database right. Mm? You don't want to do that. Version 4 of Creative Commons includes explicitly, this is a very important point, uh, the sui generis database right in the scope. Um, since it is included in the scope of the license, it follows the license elements. The license elements are basically the attribution and share alike obligations. They're also known on commercial and on derivatives, but we already said that we don't really think these uh, are elements that we should uh, 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 consider. It means that if a database is only protected by the sui generis database, right, you can extract substantial amounts of this data and you are under the obligation to attribute uh, the paternity of this database in the forms <laughs> indicated by the attribution clause. Uh, if there is a share-alike uh, uh, um, uh, license element clause on uh, that database, then you can, of course, redistribute that product under the obligation to use the same license. It's something that is quite common in many other fields, like free software. Uh, so we have this double uh, uh, possibility. Um, it does not export the sui generis database right in countries where it, it, it doesn't exist. This is another very important aspect. The sui generis database right is a European invention. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Say, I think we made a survey, South Korea. It could be recognized by bilateral agreement with the European Commission, and we think that only South Korea so far has done that, and probably nobody else is going to do that. So if you are dealing, for example, with a US database or you know, with any database located outside the, 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 the European Union, which is not covered by the sui generis database right, you want to make sure that you're not, for you know, a bad drafting of the license, exporting contractually these rights. This might be a bit technical, so I don't want to enter into the detail of that. If you are interested, we can, you know, you can ask it. But you know, rest assured that it has been drafted in a way that also this potential uh, um, uh, danger has been uh, avoided. It is well known and interoperable. Uh, it's not the only license out there, but the fact that Creative Commons licenses are known and <coughs> widely used increases interoperability, which is another very important aspect. And they're also almost ready. Uh, Creative Commons version 4 right now is not uh, uh, public available. Uh, the current version is version 3. Uh, version 4 should be ready, should have been ready almost a year ago. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, drafting and redrafting to, to make them uh, uh, look very nice. We'll see briefly what this, all this drafting has brought to. Uh, and, uh, but they should be ready really literally in weeks. In right in November, it's, <laughs> it's a bit, uh, we, we, had, we have had a lot of, uh, of dates, so it's, uh, but really they, they're almost ready. They're, we're rereading the final drafts. So they should be almost there. Um, 
So, what should you do until uh, if you cannot really wait? You cannot use the CC 4.0, but you need to apply it now. You know, right now you're you're not listening to me, and you are uh, deciding the license to apply to your database. Uh, there is C uh, Creative Commons uh, version three, so the current uh, version. This is an option, but uh, you have to consider two main uh, things. This version is still. Uh, um, uh, it comes still in an unported version, so let's say a general version. If you go on the online chooser, you say no jurisdiction or, or, or unported, or you can choose the version ported to uh, Lithuania, Belgium, Netherlands, US, uh, you pick the country. This is very important because in the unported version, the sui generis database right is not mentioned. It means that if you apply a Creative Commons version 3 to your database, and this version 3 is the imported one, you're not licensing the database right. So you're not allowing the permission to data mine your database. If you're data mining a database under this version 3, you're infringing the database right. Hmm? If you choose a version 3 ported to a European Union country, so, for example, the Dutch version, the German version, uh, the Spanish version. There is a mention of the sui generis database, right? But it's a waiver. It's not included in the scope of the license, but the sui generis is waived. It means that uh, the right holder uh, relinquishes that right and says, I will never enforce it. This is an option, but it means that uh, um, like the clauses like attribution or share alike do not apply to the sui generis. <coughs> you're not licensing it. You're saying you're not going to enforce it. So if you're interested in receiving attribution for the use of your database, uh, Creative Commons version 3 ported to a European jurisdiction will not grant you this possibility. Hmm? Uh, a licensee, so somebody who uses your database, <coughs> is not bound to recognize you attribution for the database part. We're not talking about copyright right now. Um, so you can use them, yes, but it needs to be the version 3 ported to European Union country, and you have to keep in mind that the sui generis right is not licensed, it's waived, is another major <coughs> uh, difference. Uh, well, briefly, what are the other major differences between uh, 3 and 4? Well, the 3 is ready, the 4, as we have seen, is going to be ready in weeks. Uh, the 3 uh, ported to a European <laughs> jurisdiction uh, waives the sui generis database right. This acronym means that they li the license 4 licenses it. So in, in the hypothetic, in the, the hypothesis where there is a repository and this is only protected by um, uh, a sui generis database right. If this repository is under a Creative Commons version 3 ported <coughs> to European Union, you can use it, but you're not uh, obliged to recognize attribution. If you are the who makes it available, keep in mind that that's fine, but nobody that reuses this database will, will be obliged to give you any attribution. So if for you attribution is a very important aspect, version 3 is not able to, to, to offer this possibility to you. Um, well, th there are another few differences that maybe are more technical. I mentioned them, uh, but you know, again, if you're interested, we can discuss them further. If not, I so just mentioned them. 3 is a general clause of reservation for dozens, so the you know, possible scope of protection is bigger. Uh, another aspect that might, it, it's cross-border between purely technical and, and general interest is the fact that, as we have seen, this three version, there is the unported version and then the version ported to every single country. Mm? And it may, may, this can create important consequences as the fact that what we just saw about the sui generis database, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for many different reasons, including the possible confusion that this can, uh, can, can cause, uh, version 4 will not be uh, imported, uh, unported, uh, uh, Dutch, uh, Lithuanian, uh, uh, Finnish version. It will come in, uh, let's say, only one flavor, the international one. So it has been rewritten in a way that is uh, jurisdic 
jurisdiction agnostic, that it's based as much as possible on common international principles of, of corporate law, uh, to the extent that this is possible. So there will be only one version, hmm? the international one. However, there will be translations, which is a completely different thing than creating adapta adapted versions or ported versions. Uh, so you will still find uh, 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 um, the version in your own language, but this will be a, a, a translation <coughs> of this international version. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, it means that uh, uh, we, we will still have uh, the, the regular uh, commons deed representation. So this is the, of the current version 3, and this is basically what you obtain when you choose uh, the Creative Commons license uh, uh, online. You, you get you, what you obtain is first of all a common deed that is a summary, uh, humanly understandable. Um, like we lawyers, we're not human, I uh, never really agreed with this vision. Um, that basically very directly tells you what you can do and uh, under which conditions. Mm? Uh, version 4 will look, uh, look and feel might change, colors might change, but will still look in terms of uh, you are free under the following condition categories to do almost, it's going to look almost the same. Mm? So from a user perspective, there are not going to be big changes <laughs> from how you know you, you relate to the license, how you choose it, how you apply it, etc. Um, what will change is the legal code. So if uh, here you go on the first line uh, legal code, you go to the to the actual contract, hmm? to to the document that has a legal value, the one that you have to read if you want to make sure uh, what are your your obligations. And this will change. This current one is attribution is version three, and this one is version four. It's just you know, uh, uh, um, well, first of all, to show you that they exist and are almost ready, and but also to tell you that uh, the structure. If you're interested in more the detail and the legal part, the structure of the license has changed. There is uh, a preamble, consideration for the licensor, definitions have changed. So there are a lot of technical changes that under a legal point of view are interesting, but as users, uh, not technical users, uh, you shouldn't be uh, too much concerned. The main difference that you have to keep in mind is the sui generis thing. Uh, what you won't see is the ported version. This is the, the Dutch ported version. This one won't exist anymore. There will be a translation, but not a ported version. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, I first mentioned to the fact that yes, there are other licenses, but for the standardization and interoperability <coughs> issues that we, we just uh, 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 briefly detailed, we, we think that uh, Creative Commons version 4 is uh, the one license that you should go for. There is also the CC0 that many times is, is mentioned, and uh, especially in the PSI sector, public sector information. This is an option, but the CC0 again is a waiver. Mm? You're relinquishing every right on that database or, or, or you know, material. It means that, for example, if you're interested in attribution recognition, CC0 won't allow this. Mm? Um, the reason why CC0 might be more suitable for the PSI is that uh, your PSI normally, then you know, again, it's a very great categorization, but they're not scientific data or there is not a scientific uh, uh, department behind it that is interested in getting some sort of scientific recognition. Many times PSI are, I don't know, the, the municipality that based on the basis of its uh, institutional activity collects the the uh, I don't know the the, the 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 boundaries of the rights into the town. But there is not many times there is no need for a recognition of uh, of, of, uh, of paternity in that. So CC zero might be an option for scientific databases. However, we think that uh, usually what we saw attribution, especially it's uh, it's very it's considered a very important aspect. So with CC zero you won't you won't get it. And uh, yeah, basically these are our conclusions. Use uh, CC 4.0 as soon as it is, it, uh, it is ready. Um, well, thank you for the attention. If there are questions now or the session later, we have uh, two big panels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.